First on CBS this morning, a congressional investigation raises serious concerns about the safety of some popular children's car booster seats. The probe began after our CBS News and ProPublica reports back in February. We showed you how some booster seats got a passing grade despite disturbing video of crash test, crash test dummies being tossed violently around during safety testing. Well, this morning we have new crash test videos uncovered in the congressional investigation. And our Chris Van Cleve is going to join us. He's been following this for months to show us this is an industry-wide problem. Chris, good morning to you. And you've got some seats there with you, I see. Well, good morning. You know, these booster seats say things like side impact tested, and we're going to show you those tests, but it's important to know the companies decide what qualifies as passing. Now, booster seats raise a child up so the adult seat belt in the back seat falls in the right place. All of these meet or exceed federal standards, but this one says it's for kids 40 and up. Here, 30 pounds and up, and that 10 pound difference, that's where the concern comes in because experts say for kids weighing less than 40 pounds, a booster seat may not offer adequate protection in a crash. The videos are hard to watch. Child sized dummies flail violently in car booster seats during a side impact crash test. In each case, even here in this Graco video where the dummy's head escapes the seat and strikes the side, the booster seats all passed because there are no federal standards. Those tests are shoddy and meaningless. It was just simply appalling. Representatives Raja Krishamurthy and Katie Porter launched a House Oversight Committee investigation involving seven brands of car booster seats. Keep your kid in the harnessed car seat following our CBS News ProPublica reports in February. I have to credit you folks with really uh, shining a light on this issue. Their findings obtained by CBS News conclude booster seat makers endangered the lives of millions of American children and misled consumers about the safety of booster seats by failing to conduct appropriate side impact testing, deceiving consumers with false and misleading statements about their side impact testing protocols, and unsafely recommending that children under 40 pounds and as light as 30 pounds can use booster seats. The report also calls for the Federal Trade Commission and state attorneys general to launch consumer protection investigations. Parents are relying on companies to sell safe products, and they're relying on the federal government to regulate those products. And unfortunately, neither of those two things happened, and that is disgraceful. When the manufacturer's guidance is in fact a bunch of falsehoods and lies. Kids' lives are being put at risk. Dr. Ben Hoffman is a lead author of car seat recommendations for the American Academy of Pediatrics. There is not a scenario in which I would ever want to see a child under 40 pounds in a booster seat. It's just not necessary. We asked Hoffman to review the test videos obtained during the House investigation. Would you have given any of the booster seats in those videos a passing grade? I can't imagine that I would give those a passing grade. The videos where the impact was on the far side, those were especially terrifying because there was so much movement of the head and neck of the dummy outside of the shell of the booster seat. Since at least 2002, the American Academy of Pediatrics has recommended kids be at least 40 pounds before transitioning to a booster seat. Canada has required it since 1987, but U.S. regulations still allow for kids weighing as little as 30 pounds to be in a booster. Do it again. Jillian Brown was a 37-pound 5-year-old when the car she was riding in was hit from the side on the way to school. First thing I did was look back to, to see, um, to check on the girls. Brown was strapped into her Evenflow Big Kids booster seat. The crash left her internally decapitated, paralyzing her from the neck down. Now nine years old, she's kept alive by a ventilator. I would never have bought that if I'd known. I would have left them in the front-facing five-point harness for years. You know, you read it and you believe it. Even Flo says her booster seat performed as designed, and Jillian's injuries were primarily due to the severity of the crash and or driver error, adding the seat meets or exceeds federal standards and passed the company's internal crash tests. The company settled a lawsuit with the Brown family this summer. But four years before the crash that left Jillian paralyzed, internal emails from 2012 show Evenflow decided to spend $30,000 in additional labeling costs to market boosters to kids 30 pounds and up in the U.S. instead of adopting the 40-pound standard required in Canada for the same seats. One executive writing, I have looked at 40 pounds for the U.S. numerous times and will not approve this. 
House investigators found several makers have adopted a 40-pound minimum, even Flo and Graco, as recently as earlier this year. But Baby Trend and Kids Embrace continue to market their booster seats for children as little as 30 pounds. Chico's website now has a 40-pound minimum, but we were able to buy this booster Tuesday that says 30 pounds and up. As a parent, I am begging people to please not put children under 40 pounds in a booster seat. What we've seen from this investigation is terrifying and heartbreaking. The companies all declined to go on camera. So did their trade association, which says in a statement, a correctly used car seat is a child's best defense in a car crash, reducing the risk of injury by 45 percent compared with vehicle seat belts alone, adding the industry supports stringent federal standards. Now, the report is also critical of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration that would set those standards, because despite being directed by Congress 20 years ago to create a side impact crash test standard for car seats, the agency hasn't done it. NHTSA says the process is, quote, highly complex, and those standards are coming soon. So, parents, what do you do? Experts say that for kids in that 30-pound range, they're safest staying in a car seat like this that has the five-point harness until they grow out of it. That's going to be at least 40 pounds. Some go up to 65 pounds. In fact, if you look on the side here, this one even says 40 to 100 pounds to the booster and at least four years old. Then make the transition to a booster seat. Now, the Oversight Committee wants to hear from parents. We have more on that as well as more from the car seat companies at cbsnews.com. Gail? Chris, I'm so, so happy that you're still on top of this story. You think as a parent, you put your child on a booster seat, they're okay. Clearly, that is not always the case, depending on their weight. Such important information, and we'll put it on our website for people that couldn't, yeah. that couldn't take it all in in that one setting. Very important information you just gave us again this morning. Thank you, Chris Van Cleef.